नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू सनसेट टेलीविजन आई एम विशाल दहिया एंड यू वाचिंग आर शो पर्सपेक्टिव वेयर वी ब्रिंग यू डिटेल्ड एनालिसिस ऑफ की नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल इश्यूज एज वेल टुडे वी गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द प्रोजेक्ट टाइगर द टाइगर्स ऑक्युपाई एन इंपॉर्टेंट प्लेस इन द इंडियन कल्चर सिंस एजेस इट हैज बीन अ सिंबल ऑफ मैग्निफिसेंस पावर ब्यूटी एंड फियर्सनेस इट हैज बीन एसोसिएटेड विद ब्रेवरी एंड विल एज वेल वन ऑफ द लार्जेस्ट स्पीशीज a conservation initiative of its kind in the world was launched on 1st of april 1973 to promote the conservation of tiger in india it was launched in nine reserves and has been expanded considerably to 50 tiger reserves it was later also converted into a statutory authority ntca to address the ecological as well as administrative concerns for conserving tigers today we will take a stock of uh, what kind of challenges we have faced along the way and also analyze uh, as to what should be our journey from here onwards when we are talking about conservation of uh, tigers and for more on this we're joined by a very distinguished panel of experts let me first introduce them to you beginning with we have with us in the studio today dr mk ranjit singh ji he is uh, former director of the wildlife uh, preservation uh, welcome uh, dr ranjit singh here to sunset television we are also joined by dr sp yadav uh, he is uh, adg project tiger and member secretary ntca and uh, mr ravi singh uh, secretary general and ceo of wwf india is also with us welcome both of you gentlemen as well i'll begin with you uh, dr ranjit singh ji and let's start by first analyzing in in your views you know how do you assess the journey of conservation of tigers in our country it is it is uh, one of the uh, you know most talked about conservation programs uh, and uh, we're stepping into the 50th year now so how do you assess the journey so far you must assess it from the view point of what was the situation vis a vis the tiger and conservation per se in india at that point of time in 1973 when we started um and then <clears throat> with that backside that background to assess it what is has achieved and what it may not have achieved over these 49 odd years um the uh, population of the of the animal was less than 2000 at that point of time mm-hmm. 1900 odd and now the the numbers have increased but uh, i would like to put it in the perspective that it um, was from our point of view starting at that point of time mm-hmm. the tigers were not only on wane but everything was um on the point of being faded out uh in the 20 odd years since independence uh india had other priorities and forest and wildlife had suffered but we had we had political support and uh, uh, an impetus to do what we could achieve okay. and with in india we need political support to achieve conservation mm-hmm. conservation in india has come from the top almost invariably <clears throat> but i would like to uh, to put it across this way that we used tiger to save something far more valuable than the tiger itself the habitat of the tiger or rather the various diverse uh, uh habitat the tiger occupies which constitute the national natural heritage which is the biome and the biota of india okay and and indeed it is not about tiger and, and it tiger. therefore the tiger was used as a symbol to save something more because as i have always said you can have the habitat without a wild animal but you cannot have wild tiger without the habitat without the habitat and when you uh, you know and therefore we selected the first nine okay. i was at that time the member secretary which started project tiger and then on the 1st of april or before i had it over to my late colleague the distinguished a uh, wildlife person kala sakla uh, on the 1st of uh, i think 49 years ago but we selected not the best areas for the tiger in the sense the largest population of tiger we selected one per each state mm-hmm. which had the greatest potential for upgrading because instead of giving to uh, and and protecting areas we did not select for instance kaziranga mm-hmm. because kaziranga was already well looked after there were more tigers in kaziranga 
uh, at that point of time um, than in anywhere else in NSM. Mm -hmm. But we selected, because Kaziranga was looked after thanks to the rhinoceros. Uh, and therefore we selected the best area, in my point of view, Manas, mm -hmm. which we upgraded. Okay. And at that point of time, Manas had the largest number of Schedule 1 species of the country. And we helped the tiger hit us in elevating okay. Manas. Okay. Now, that's, that's, that's a, you know, a apt sum up of how it began and what was uh, the, the idea behind all that. Uh, let's also understand where do we stand today. Dr. Uh, S.P. Yadav is with us. Uh, uh, Dr. Yadav, uh, the Project Tiger is now known as NTCA. You know, it has uh, statutory uh, powers as well and uh, which were pretty much needed in terms of the recommendations given by certain committees there. Now, in... Where do we stand when we talk about uh, uh, the, not only the numbers of, of tigers in the country, but also, as uh, uh, Dr. Ranjit Singh was pointing out, uh, the habitat, the habitat conservation, because it has a larger impact. It's just not about tigers. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> Vishalji, very true. Uh, the Project Tiger was launched on uh, 1st April 1973 with nine reserves, and now we have 51 tiger reserves covering around 74,000 square kilometers of the geographical area of the country. And that uh, accounts for approximately 2.24% of geographical area of the country. And uh, tiger numbers, yes, we have achieved, uh, our achievements are known to the world. We have been recognized at the global level. Now we have more than 70% of global tiger population. In that way, we have gone uh, very, we have achieved our achievement is uh, commend, uh, it's commendable. And uh, as you know that 2010 in St. Petersburg, the global uh, community of Tiger Ranch countries, they committed to double the tiger numbers. We have already achieved it four years in advance in 2018. So as far as tiger numbers are concerned, we, we, are, we are doing pretty good. Our annual increment of the tiger population is approximately on an average 6%. And as far as habitat is concerned, as I said that uh, we, uh, it is our priority to secure as much area as possible where there is the potential of tiger conservation. Now we have 51 tiger reserves and more are in pipeline. So we want to secure more and more habitat okay. because as Dr. Ranjit Singh has said, tiger conservation is not only the uh, protection of tiger, but it is uh, umbrella species is protects uh, entire gamut of ecosystem and other wildlife so that is that is that objective is being achieved by project tiger okay. uh, through national tiger conservation authority okay okay and we will talk about uh, those aspects in detail as well as to uh, what more uh, is being done and needs to be done there but let me first bring in uh, mr ravi singh also mr singh uh, from your perspective you know uh, not only the assessment of uh, project tiger but in in the broader sense when we are talking about uh, Wildlife conservation, uh, where, where does India stand and, and how much of a contribution uh, has Project Tiger made over these uh, uh, five decades? Well, as far as conservation is concerned in India, it is quite frankly the flagship species. It, uh, it uh, encompasses aspects of uh, best practices. It involves a very large number of people, not just in the government, but outside it too. Communities, uh, business and industry, corporates, media. So um, I think one of the biggest contributions to conservation is the fact that it has a multifaceted support base. And as you see the support base increasing in the younger generation and the knowledge of this aspect going out to different segments and facets of society, it is actually contributing in a larger sense to our country's conservation and the environment. This uh -huh. is, in a way, a flagship program that leads on these aspects. It's not that the other species are not important, but the tiger for India is a sovereign species, and this is our sovereign to look after its uh, well-being and procreation. Uh -huh. The second thing I think we must bring out is that the contribution you asked for the larger contribution, there is a factor that was not considered at that time when uh, in 1973 the project was launched and that was this aspect of climate change. Uh -huh. It is today facing us. 
without doubt, one of the most important challenges of our time. And the conservation of large habitats and the conservation of connectivity is actually contributing, is actually a mitigant factor in a way, but it helps India to combat these aspects, to sequester a greater amount of carbon, to able to contribute also ecosystem services in this regard. Okay. So it's a fairly complex area, and this is the contribution overall of what NTCA today and a lot of other agencies and uh, contributions in this area are actually showing up for the tiger. Okay, okay, and now, for India. Okay, now that's 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 a very uh, important uh, point where you uh, uh, you know uh, finish your uh, response there, Mr. Singh, and I'd like to bring in Dr. Uh, Ranjit Singh here. Dr. Singh, you know, uh, we were earlier talking about, if you remember in our previous conversation, we were talking about how it's really important uh, to go ahead and uh, take a holistic view when we're talking about wildlife conservation and, and uh, specifically the preservation of habitats as well. Therein, this element of the challenge of climate change, this issue becomes really important. So from your experience, what more needs to be done? Because this is an, uh, a challenge which uh, not only the uh, human species, but also the animal species are also facing the same, same problem. Indeed. And therefore, it is very essential to save our forest cover um, as carbon sinks, as carbon, uh, uh, for carbon sequestration, as well as for um, uh, the climate, the temperature, and what is most important, <clears throat> about 400, 396 that I remember, but now there must be more, of our perennial streams come from our protected areas. Perennial water. And <clears throat> next to oxygen, that's the most portable water is the most important uh, commodity that nature can provide to us. I'll give you an example mm -hmm. in Project Tiger itself. And this is, I'm sorry, uh, it was not done before. <clears throat> Palamo, which is uh, um, a rain deficient, it's in a rain shadow area. Palamo in uh, Jharkhand, it used to be Bihar in those days. Uh, we established the first, one of the first nine tiger reserves was in Palamo. And I went there soon after. And there was a drought. The DFO there, uh, I wish, as I said, this has happened elsewhere, took uh, the, uh, he, he divided the water streams there in a, in, a, in a rainfall deficient area into four categories, monsoonal, stream, uh, water flow ending in September. Okay. Those that ended, the, the streams started, uh, stopped flowing in December, ballpark. Then those who stopped flowing in March and those that were perennial, you know, continued throughout the year. It was interesting that within three years, the third year, actually two years plus, by the third year, they, those streams which were, had stopped flowing uh, in September, October, mm -hmm. were, be, uh, became live till December. Those that were live till December were flowing till March and those that were flowing till March previously became perennial. If that is the gift that Palamau gave to the people of India, it was more important than the six tigers that were then in Palamau. Mm -hmm. This is, you see, a park is not just for tigers or animals. It is for far more important things, as Ravi has pointed out. One is carbon sequestration. One is to conserve. And I'll give you this concrete example mm -hmm. <clears throat> that, <clears throat> that and the, the tiger project has... Um, has taught us a lesson. I, can, uh, I won't delve on it. But I once went uh, to Sariska in the 90s, okay. just about when I was retiring, and I'd been there 40 years before, and, and I asked the people, because around, around Sariska is this total degradation. I said, what jungle ka kya hua? Kaise khatam ho gaya? And you know what the reply of the, of the thing is? If the khatam ho gaye, to jungle ka rahega. You see that association of the tiger, the awe of the tiger, even the fear of the tiger. Mm -hmm. jungle hai, nahi jungle ka, if by that even, by that awe, you can save the forest of India, the tiger has paid his, 
his okay. dividends. Okay, okay. So, so that that uh, again, you know, uh, comes uh, takes us back uh, to that issue that is just not about uh, tigers; it's about uh, the overall larger issue as well. Dr. Yadav, on the climate change issue, you know, what are the uh, what are the plans and what are the strategies which uh, the Project Tiger, the NTCA has? Uh, how are we planning to tackle this? Uh, you know, Vishal, once any national park and sanctuary, their status is upgraded to tiger reserves, then it enjoys highest degree of protection under the Wildlife Protection Act. So uh, the illicit felling and poach paint, all these problems are not there. So carbon sequestration is uh, fully ensured in tiger reserves. Besides this, uh, recently we have published a water atlas of tiger reserves. More than 350 sweet water streams, they originate. Either they originate or they have their catchment in the tiger reserves. So that's very important for water security of the country. Uh, protection and conservation of tigers and their habitat is important. Further, uh, this year, uh, we are doing this uh, wetlands. Wetland, we are giving emphasis to the wetland and all river and all our water bodies uh, management uh, in tiger reserves, so great emphasis to this aspect also, okay. which will ensure uh, preparedness of these tiger reserves to any adverse impact of climate change. We, uh, we do once in a four year independent management effectiveness evaluation of tiger reserves, just to assess this climate change readiness of tiger reserves. We are this year, from this year, we are including a criteria to assess the preparedness of tiger reserves to, for the climate change. So basically, uh, protection and conservation of forest cover, uh -huh. soil moisture conservation efforts taken in tiger reserves, and the wetland management, large water bodies, they are available in tiger reserves. So management of wetland, conservation of aquatic flora and fauna, that is also being uh, prioritized in tiger reserves. And I believe that all these steps will help in mitigating climate change to tiger reserves. Okay, and then what about uh, you know other challenges uh, apart from climate change? Because of course, uh, uh, when we've been talking about uh, uh, preservation of uh, habitats or, or you know the the wildlife conservation, uh, there are uh, traditional challenges as well. And uh, you know, uh, the, the, with with changing times, new challenges arise as well. Climate change, of course, is is one of it, uh, and it is likely to stay with us. We'll have to think of innovative ways like the ones you're pointing. But what about other challenges? Uh, in fact, uh, poaching is the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. Still, poaching takes place because there are demands in uh, other countries, not inside country, but uh, it's a market-driven poaching which takes place. Uh, there are certain countries where tiger body parts are used, consumed in various forms. In traditional medicines also they are used. So this demand-driven poaching, that takes place in our country. So poaching is still the biggest uh, challenge. The natural disasters like Summer has come and you must have heard the fire in Sariska. And fire uh, is a great threat uh, to our efforts in conservation. Uh, and, and the other natural disasters mm -hmm. like cyclone and uh, that kind of thing. Human, then another challenge is human-tiger conflict. Let me say that the biggest challenge before a protected area managers or the forest department is right now to tackle, to deal with human-wildlife conflict a tiger conflict. This is another big challenge. Mm -hmm. And then there are certain uh, areas, uh, certain tiger reserves where the tiger density is low. Now the challenge is how to bring back uh, the population to the carrying capacity. So, and, and the last challenge I would say on priority, uh, the human dependency on natural resources. Okay. A lot of poor people, they live in and around tiger reserves and for their daily need of fuel, wood, fodder, uh, the fruits which they collect from the forest and they depend on these, these tiger reserves. So these are the challenges which uh, we are facing and which we are trying to uh, manage okay. to our uh, frontline staff and uh, officers. Okay, okay. Uh, Mr. Singh, you know, uh, on, on these, uh, some of these challenges, you earlier spoke about climate change and of course uh, that uh, remains the key focus area. But apart from that, the the human wildlife conflict uh, and uh, the dependency of uh, you know those living around that particular uh, uh, tiger reserve on uh, the natural resources uh, of course that also uh, becomes a reason of human wildlife conflict there as well apart from several others so in your views uh, what more needs to be done to you know to tackle this aspect because this is uh, also uh, becoming a bigger problem 
So uh, provision of uh, livelihoods and development of livelihoods, development of skills, so that people could also have other outlets for employment. And uh, these outlets for employment need not necessarily be in their own area, could also be outside in the other employable uh, segments and sectors of the country. And as India goes forward, it will require people who are skilled and semi-skilled and all these could be one area that uh, the government is actually looking at and, in, uh, and to some extent uh, they are successful. The, the report card is uh, uh, at this point of time uh, fragmented, but there are successful uh, examples that can be followed. The second thing is that we have to find ways to reach out to these communities and these uh, uh, people who live on the peripheries to be able to help to manage, to compensate if they've had damage, uh -huh. and to be able to bring some of them to the side of conservation as well. Because their knowledge of the area, the knowledge of the ground is actually greater than most uh, most of the agencies that are actually involved in this. And quite often they are, they understand the animals, they understand their behavior. It is not that they fear the tiger. Uh -huh. They may have some other aspects that they worry about. So these are some things that we need to uh, take care of. The other thing is, I think you must not underestimate the role of protection. Protection provided by law, protection provided by the government, and protection of these areas and habitats, with earlier mentioned by Dr. Ranjit Singh, this is key because it helps you to monitor what is happening on the ground. It helps you to monitor and look for, you know, the uh, the uh, periodic evaluation of an area which is under your control, mm -hmm. and thereby to be able to bring out schemes of the government that may be beneficial for those very uh, areas that we are talking about. So it's a very large. Uh, uh, canvas. Okay. The answers are, are fairly complex. They are difficult, but these have to be faced. And let us say India is facing it. Not all the time is it very apparent, but we are facing it. And we are coming up with models uh -huh. which are actually progressive and better than what we may have had 25, 30 years ago. Okay. Okay, there it is. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ravi Singh, Dr. S.P. Yadav and Dr. Ranjit Singh as well uh, for sharing your views and insight. As uh, all of you are pointing out uh, clearly, uh, as far as Project Tiger is concerned uh, or, uh, you know, the entire effort to go ahead and conserve uh, tiger, its habitat and other wildlife uh, species as well, there have been uh, uh, marvellous achievements along the way, but there are challenges and those challenges still remain. And in fact, uh, more... Uh, out-of-the-box solutions will have to be thought about, specifically when we're talking about uh, uh, challenges which come along with the time like climate change, but of course, uh, traditional issues uh, like poaching and uh, the wildlife-human conflict as well uh, will have to be tackled in an effective manner to ensure that uh, tiger conservation and in turn, the habitat conservation and the larger wildlife conservation is successful. We'll come back again with a different topic. Till then, keep watching Sunset Television. Thank you.